Welcome to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm Dustin Roberts, the outreach minister here on staff. And for the next 25 minutes, I'll also be your host as Rabbi Schneider shares the covenant names of God. When a baby is born, the new parents give their child a name, and sometimes the choice is very intentional, with spiritual tones like grace, hope, or mercy, and other times it's passed down from one generation to the next, but many are surprised to learn that God has a personal name himself, and it's rich with meaning. Now let's get started. Rabbi Schneider will open us up with a word of prayer as he helps us get better acquainted with the names of God our Father. Father God, we worship you today, and we ask that you to release power on the preaching of your word, and that, Father, it would bring forth a harvest of fruit for you a hundredfold. We ask this together in Yeshua's name and for Jesus' fame, amen and amen. I wanna talk about the names of God in scripture, particularly we're gonna be looking, beloved ones, in this series at God's covenant name. Did you know that the Lord actually has a personal name? That Father God actually has a personal name. Just like you have a personal name, your God has a personal name as well. I wanna begin today by going to the book of Exodus with you. If you've got your Bible, I want you to go there with me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at God's sacred name And then we're gonna show you when God joins his covenant name, his sacred name, to a function that he performs in the lives of those that he's saving. I'm making now an introductory comment by going to the book of Exodus, chapter number 33, verse number 18. Now in this section of scripture, Moses has been calling out to Father God and he's wanting Father God to affirm him And finally, the conversation reaches a climax in verse number 18. I'm going to pick up there. Moses says to the Lord, I pray you, he said, show me your glory. Again, this is the climax of the conversation. Moses keeps on looking to the Lord for assurance. And then finally, Moses said, show me your glory. And the Lord says this to him. Listen carefully as I pick up in verse 19. And he said, I myself will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious and I'll show compassion on whom I'll show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no man can see me and live. Let's put this in context. Moses is asking, Father God, he's saying, God, Lord, I want to encounter you. Show me your glory. And the Lord responds back to Moses and he says, Moses, you can't see me face to face, but Moses, he said, I am gonna proclaim my name to you. So once again, Moses says, show me your glory. And the Lord says, you can't see me face to face, but I'm gonna proclaim my name to you. He tells Moses to go hide himself in the cleft of the rock and to call upon Father's name. Moses goes into the cleft of the rock And as Moses is calling upon Father by his sacred name, which we're gonna be studying in this scripture, I'm not saying it yet, because we haven't got to it yet, but Moses is calling now upon the Lord by his sacred personal name, Exodus 34, verse six. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives inequity, transgression, and sin, yet he will by no means leave the guilty go unpunished, visiting the inequity of fathers on the children and on the grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Moses made haste to bow low and to worship. And so I'm setting the stage right now, beloved ones, by helping you to see how incredible it is to know Father God's personal name and in knowing his name, to have revelation about who he is. Moses says, Lord, show me your glory. Father says, I'm gonna proclaim my name to you. Go hide in the cleft of the rock. Moses then calls upon Father God by his name, a breathy Yahweh. 
And as Moses calls upon the name of Yahweh, the Lord himself, Yahweh himself, descends upon Moses and he says, I am Yahweh God, compassionate and gracious, full of loving kindness and truth. And Moses, literally, beloved ones, is filled with light. He encounters God and he knows who he is. So before we move further into this, I want to take a couple steps back now as we go to the very beginning of the Bible to the book of Genesis chapter number one. We read the verses that we're all familiar with. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and and the earth. So in the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1:1, when we see God's name translated in English, the actual Hebrew word there for the English word God is the Hebrew word Elohim. So what the verse actually says is in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. The word Elohim is a title. It's not God's personal name, but it's a descriptive title of God. It's interesting to note that during the time that the Old Testament was written, during the time that Moses wrote Genesis, even the heathen referred to their God as El. Now, we're looking at the word Elohim. Elohim, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Elohim is the plural of El. Even the heathens referred to their gods as El. It just meant God or Lord. But here, it's not a singular El, but we add the Im on the end of it to make the El Elohim, which makes El plural, Elohim. And the reason that we're adding the Im on, the reason that the Lord added on the Im sound at the end of El is because when we add the word Im, on the end of a word in Hebrew, it, number one, shows accent. It marks it to give it greater weight. It gives it an exclamation point. And so when we say Elohim, it makes the word El just stand out. So that's the first reason that we use the plural of the form El in Genesis 1.1. The second reason that we use the plural of the word El in Genesis 1.1 is because within the Godhead, there is a multi-dimensional aspect. And so in other words, as we continue in the book of Genesis chapter one and two, we hear the Lord saying, as he's about to create man, he says, let us, he said, make man in our own image. And so I'm looking now at Genesis chapter one, verse 26. Then Elohim, then God said, let us make man in our own image in our own likeness. And so the question is, who is the Lord referring to in Genesis 1:26 when he said, let us make man, and get this now, our own image. The point is, is that within the Godhead, there is relationship. And this is what we read about in the Gospel of John, that Jesus is God himself. He's the son who's always been in the bosom of the father. And so the fact that we have a relationship on earth, a relationship between a man and a woman, relationships within families, relationship within society, this whole concept of relationship stems out of God's own nature. This comes from the concept of the fact that within God, there is relationship. He's talking to himself. The son is in his bosom and there's an eternal dialogue going on between the father and the son and the son and the father. And so the Elohim connotates the fact that there is a relationship within the Godhead. It's multi-dimensional. There's only one God. We all know that. There's only one God, one God alone. But within the one God, there's relationship. And so for this reason, when we read about God creating the heavens and the earth and him making man in his own image, we see him using the title Elohim rather than El because again, he's putting accent on the sense that he's not just one of many gods, but he's the one true God and there's relationship within him and thus we have Elohim in the plural form. 
You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi Schneider will be right back. But first, I want to thank everyone who just took part in the Taking the Rainbow Back Collective Action Weekend. Your prayers, your actions, and your willingness to speak out and share the truth of God with our society is making a difference. And we want to share in your successes. If you have a testimony, video, or photo from the weekend, make sure to share it with us at takingtherainbowback.com. At the core of everything we do at Discovering the Jewish Jesus is our commitment to declare the whole counsel of God's Word from start to finish. In fact, Rabbi's unique way of connecting the Old and the New Testaments has helped people all over the world to understand the Bible with fresh eyes. To join us in this work of God, give a donation online today at discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call 800-777-7835. And now here is Rabbi Schneider. As we begin to read the Old Testament, We don't see God revealed by his covenant name, which this series is about, but we simply see him being referred to as God. In fact, when Jesus was on the cross, right before he gave up his spirit, he said, Eli, Eli. And that word Eli is actually a form of this word El here. It's interesting that the only time that Jesus referred to God simply as God, as Eli, Eli, why hast thou forsaken me? The only time that he referred to God simply as God rather than as Father in terms of his own communication with him was when he felt forsaken by God because he knew God more than just El or more than just Elohim or more than just Eli as we read in the Gospels, but he knew God, listen, beloved ones, as his own Father. When then, if in the very beginning we see him revealed as Elohim, the name used for the creator, when then in scripture do we first see the Lord revealed by his covenant personal name? I'm going to answer that question as we go now together to the book of Exodus chapter number three. And we're also going to be looking here at Exodus chapter six as we get now into the meat beloved children of God in this series, we're studying the covenant names of God. In Exodus chapter three, in Exodus chapter six, we see the revelation of God's covenant name. Hear the word of God as I read, first of all, Exodus chapter three, verse 14 and 15. God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now this is God's sacred name here. God furthermore said to Moses, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial name to all generations. So in Exodus 3, we see the covenant name of God. It's made up of four Hebrew letters, Yud, He, Vav, He. And most Semitic scholars, scholars of the ancient Hebrew language, feel that it was pronounced a breathy, listen now, church, Yahweh. I want to continue on in chapter number six of Exodus. Once again, the Lord and Moses are speaking. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord. And I appear to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty. This is El Shaddai. Remember, we looked at El in the book of Genesis, El Elohim. The Lord said here, I revealed myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as God Almighty, as El Shaddai. But listen to this. But by my name, Yahweh, did I not make myself known to them. And so up to this point, those that walked with God didn't know him by his covenant name. But God revealed his covenant name to Moses. And everyone from Moses onward in the Old Testament When they called upon God, listen now, church, they called upon Father God in reverence and in love by his covenant name. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Hosea, all the prophets, they all called upon God by his name, a reverent Yahweh. Now, today, the mindset in the rabbinic Jewish community is his name is so sacred, we shouldn't speak it. 
But I want you to know, beloved ones, from my heart, that does not resonate or make sense with me because everybody in the Old Testament from Moses onward called upon Father God in love and in reverence by his name, Yahweh. See, there's something personal when you know somebody's name. That's why when you meet somebody and you want to get to know them a little bit more deeply, you say to them, what is your name? Because when they give you their name and you call them by their name, a personal relationship is formed. So even though I want to say I respect the Jewish community and I understand their reasoning for not referring to God by his name, I think biblically you can't back that up. And so this series is about God's covenant name. I want to obviously challenge every listener right now that if you're going to call upon God by his name, you need to do it in reverence and in love. But I also want to say to you that God loves you and he revealed his name to you because he wants you to know him. He wants you to love him and he wants you to be able to feel comfortable enough to call upon him by his name, Yahweh. Otherwise, church, he wouldn't have revealed himself to us by his name. In fact, did you know that in the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament, God's covenant name, Yahweh, again made up of the four Hebrew consonants, yud heh vav heh is used over 7,000 times. Now, today, we hear different songs that are calling God Jehovah. And this is a mispronunciation of God's holy sacred name, a breathy Yahweh. And the reason that the Gentile church is calling upon God by Jehovah oftentimes rather than Yahweh is because the ancient Jewish scribes actually did some things so the Gentiles wouldn't know how to pronounce his name. They tried to cover up his name and conceal his name so the Gentiles couldn't blaspheme it. But I wanna conclude today by talking about this point. God's personal covenant name, Yahweh, listen to this, beloved ones, is a verb. Now think about this. Even those of us that weren't the most astute students of English, we learn that a noun was a person, place, or thing. And so if you refer to a person, that person is a noun. But God's name, Yahweh, is a verb. And the tense of Yahweh is continuous, unfinished action. You see, beloved, your God and Father is alive. Yahweh is alive. He's active. He's involved in your life every second of every day. He was involved in your life yesterday. He's involved in your life today, and he'll be involved in your life forever. Continuous, unfinished action. Yahweh is your God. He's your Father, and he loves you. I want you to hear me today, church. I love you. I trust that God is using this ministry to build you up in your faith. And I encourage you to take what you're learning and share it with others, and you'll be profitable in this world for the building of the kingdom of God. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus, and Rabbi Schneider titled this message Elohim. To learn more about this daily Bible teaching program or about our teacher, Rabbi Schneider, let me invite you to go to our website. You'll find us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. That's discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Online, you'll find some amazing resources and study guides, and there's even a page dedicated to letting you know how you can support this ministry through your prayers and financial gifts. And to share a little bit more about that, here is Rabbi Schneider once again. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, we read this. The Lord says, those that honor me, I will honor. You see, beloved, we receive from that which is on a person when we honor who that person is. The Lord says, those that honor me, I will honor. This is true of the Jewish people as well. The Lord said to Abraham, I will bless those that bless thee. Beloved, I believe there's a supernatural call upon my life and upon this ministry. And by you sowing financially into this ministry, I truly believe that you're gonna receive so much more from it. Your financial contribution 
to this ministry will bring you into a relationship with the anointing that's on this ministry. And beloved, you're going to be blessed. I want to ask you, make a financial contribution today. I'm very confident it will come back to you pressed down and good measure. To give a one-time gift today, or if you would like to partner with us this year, give us a call at 800-777-7835. You can also give a donation online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And here at Discovering the Jewish Jesus, we believe that God is in the business of changing hearts and lives. And as Rabbi shared earlier, Yahweh is God and Father. He loves you and He wants to be actively and intimately involved in your life. So let me ask you this question. Is there something stopping you from accepting God's gift of intimacy? And if so, can we just pray about it real quick as we surrender our lives to the Lord fully? Father God, we come to you and we ask that you would help us surrender our ways to your divine plans. Father, help us to know you more personally. And Lord, help us to share that love with others that you've placed in our paths. Father, help us to remember that you're active and involved in every little thing that we do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen. Well, did you know that you can catch this program and any of the others that you may have missed through our mobile app? It's called the Rabbi Schneider app and it's packed with resources and videos and a daily devotional. And they're designed to help you jumpstart your day the right way. The app is free, it's available right now. You can get instant inspiration and encouragement 24 hours a day, seven days a week on demand. And then don't forget last weekend, believers all over the country participated in our collective action weekend. And we would love to hear from you. If you have any videos or photos or story highlights, make sure you visit our website, takingtherainbowback.com. Click the link to share your photos, videos, and stories. And now let's wrap up today's program from our series, The Covenant Names of God, with a special blessing from Rabbi Schneider. In the book of Numbers, chapter 6, we find a personal blessing from God our Father. This blessing should touch our hearts because it's so personal. Father God wants to intimately bless you. So receive his blessing into your life today with gladness and an open heart. Yahweh, 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance, and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you, and shalom. Let our prayer team pray for you. We lift up every individual request before the Lord. And then, as God answers your prayer request, or if God has touched your life through discovering the Jewish Jesus, send us your testimony. We want to rejoice with you, and your testimony will encourage others. Submit your prayer request or testimony at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. You can also connect with us on your social media outlets to stay up to date on the content you love. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribe on YouTube. Connecting with Discovering the Jewish Jesus has never been easier. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again tomorrow when Rabbi Schneider reveals another one of God's names, Yahweh Yireh. That's Tuesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.